So during the last couple of weeks, I've been breaking down Arkansas schedule. And the first thing that I've always done is look at their non-conference opponents. And Arkansas this year was actually supposed to play uh, Michigan, if I remember right. And Michigan opted out of, of the of the deal. And, uh, and so no home-and-home home series with Michigan. So instead, they're going to play Colorado State, which this year – is going to be on the road at, at Colorado State, which I think their stadium holds something like 32,000, 33,000. You know, I'm, I'm looking and, I, and I'm glancing over at this at the non-conference schedule, and you start off with Eastern Illinois. You end up, you know, you, you play with Colorado State the second game of the year. Then you host North Texas, and later on in the year, you play Tulsa. Now, Tulsa, Arkansas has a little bit of a history with Tulsa. They've played them a lot, and Tulsa's definitely given them quite a bit to, to deal with before. But the team that stands out, to me, don't get me wrong. Playing at Colorado State, playing you know a road game with with this new offense and this new head coach and you know all this all the new that's happening with the Razorbacks has you a little bit concerned about any game they play this year, and especially after the Brett Bielema era that saw losses to the Rutgers, to Toledo, to Texas Tech, close uh, close close wins to you know bad teams. As you believing now, and especially to you know newer Razorback fans, younger fans, that anybody could beat Arkansas on any given day, uh, which is true for football in itself, but especially Arkansas lately. But it has you wondering, you know, when you look at Colorado State. Okay, I think they, I, I personally believe that Arkansas should be coming home when they play North Texas, the Mean Green. They should be two and zero. So that's kind of where I'm at right now, and I've been looking at North Texas again. And they have a quarterback. I don't even think he's six foot tall. His name is Mason Fine. This guy is accurate. He he's got wonderful pocket presence. And oh yeah, he threw for over four thousand yards last year. Had a top twenty passing attack in the country. Top twenty scoring offense. And overall a top twenty five offense when you when you you know bring their run game into it, although their run Run game isn't that strong. They, they finished 67th in the country last year. But North Texas is, is a little worrisome. Now you think, well, okay, maybe not all, of his, not all of his receivers. Not all of his receivers are back. Nope, not true. Three out of the four leading receivers are back this year. They have seven returning starters on both sides of the ball. Technically, with their special teams, they have 15 returning starters for 2018. This is a team that won nine games last year. Now, you know, you go back, okay, they lost to Troy. Last year in a bowl game. Okay, yeah, they lost 30-50, to 50, and they lost the uh, Conference USA Championship game to FAU. They got blown out, 41-17. to 17. But again, this is a team, and when you consider everything that's going on in Fayetteville, when you consider the, the new staff, you're going to have a new new quarterback. If it's Cole Kelly, he's a semi new quarterback, right? I mean, he played you know he played on the road in some SEC games last year, played against some tough opponents last year. Look, I've said this time and time again, looked really poised. Not saying he looked good, but he looked really poised in the pocket. Didn't look like playing on the road really bothered him a whole lot. I think there's a little cause for concern when you're playing North Texas. You know, it's going to be on September 15th. And I think of their four games, I think that this is a team that kind of intimidates on paper more than those other four. I would even dare say on the offensive side of the ball, they're stacked like a Power 5 conference team. Like, they don't have any All-Americans, although I would I would argue that Mason Fine is probably one of the most underrated quarterbacks in college football. Any time, on any level, you've got a quarterback throwing for 4,000 yards. When you've got a top 20 scoring offense, a top 20 passing offense when you're able to do those things with the talent that you have against similar kind of talent in the same conference you know a non-power five conference you know that's that that says something at least do i think arkansas wins this game i think if they win it they're going to have to win it based on talent on the field you know i don't know if if you know and obviously you know with arkansas's new scheme and the way they're doing things you wonder if that obviously throws an advantage or is that a disadvantage to arkansas because you know this is a new system to them High tempo and all that, it's all new. Everything's new. Guys are going to be lined up in positions that they, you know, not the same positions they were lined up in a year ago. Uh, I think there's going to, I, from what I can tell and what I've read, there's going to be some, a little bit of movement still yet made to happen on the offensive line. Defensively, even with John Chavis, you, you know, you, you don't know. Can they contain this offense? I'm going to tell you, they do have, I think, one of the most undervalued corners, Arkansas does, and Ryan Pulley. Uh, I think Arkansas's linebacker core is 
vastly underrated. I think Dre Greenlaw and Scooter Harris are just not given the credit that they're due. You know, when you look at the linebacker, I know the depth isn't where they want to be at linebacker, but when you talk about those starters, I I don't know. uh, You know, I'm not saying that they're elite, but they're, they're really, really undervalued. So you wonder if the experience on defense, and, and I think with hopefully Ryan Pulley still healthy at that point, you know, again, it's the third game of the season for Arkansas, September 15th. You hope that, that if everything clicks on defense, if Chavis can get these guys to buy in, can that be enough to hold, hold these guys, you know, contain that offense? That's a, that's a question that needs to be answered, and, and um, you know, we'll find out. I think the Colorado State game will probably tell us some things, a few things. North Texas game could really test that secondary, that Arkansas secondary. So, to me, of those four non-conference opponents, North Texas sticks out like a, like a, I don't know, like a grape, a really big, fat, purple grape. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think maybe I'm underlooking, maybe I'm overlooking Tulsa? Maybe I'm not looking hard enough at Colorado State. Uh, I know Colorado State did some things that were that were impressive last year but they've kind of moved on they've they took quite a bit of a hit on offense with guys graduating and i'm just not really sold on colorado state as much as i am just you know with what north texas accomplished their head coach is um i have it written down here somewhere uh, north texas head coach is seth luttrell he's in his second year i'm telling you something looking at their schedule other than arkansas this is a team i they could go they could win 10 11 games this year I mean, it's not a power five, conf, uh, power five schedule, but that's still pretty impressive. And this is a guy who Latrell could get some looks. Uh, I mean, he's winning ball games. He's got an offense that's producing, so uh, it's going to be really interesting. I might kind of keep up with North Texas after they play Arkansas. Um, just kind of keep an eye on what they're doing the rest of the year. They're pretty impressive on offense. And Mason Fine is is a is a damn fine quarterback, despite not even being. I only think he's six feet tall, but. Uh, He's someone I think Arkansas needs to circle when when the time comes to to play North Texas. Well, that's going to do it. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you uh, sticking around. And I know, again, things, we haven't gotten content out like I wanted to, but uh, hopefully, again, closer football season comes, the juicier the content will will be and and the more of it, hopefully, there there will be. So, again, like, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, until hopefully next week, I'll see you guys around.